Hello everyone and welcome to day 3 of 12 days of BioPython where I will post one video per day related to bioinformatics topic using BioPython until Christmas. So let's get started. So what is pairwise sequence alignment? Pairwise sequence alignment is used to identify regions of similarity between two biological sequences. Identifying these region regions enable us to infer a lot of information like what traits are conserved between species, how close different species gen genetically are, and how species evolve. This similarity kind of indicates functional, functional, structural, or evolutionary relationship between two biological sequences. Pairwise sequence alignment uses a dynamic programming to do the optimal alignment between two sequences, scoring based on their similarity, how similar they are, or distance, how different they are, and then assess the significance of this score. So we have two types of pairwise alignment. We have global alignment and local alignment. Global alignment finds the best alignment over the entire length of two sequences. So what is the maximum similarity between sequence X and sequence Epsilon? On the other hand, local alignment finds the most similar subsequences among the two sequences. So what is the maximum similarity between a subsequence of X and subsequence of Epsilon? So when doing alignments, we can specify the match score and gap penalties. So the match score indicates the compatibility between an alignment of two characters in the sequence. So highly compatible characters should be given positive scores and incompatible ones should be given negative or zero. On the other hand, the gap penalties should always be negative. So BioPython includes two built-in pairwise aligners. In this case, we are going to use only pairwise two module. Both of these alignments can perform global and local alignments. So the names of the alignment functions in pairwise 2 module follow the convention. So they are named in a specific way. So alignment type XY, where alignment type can be either global or local, and XY is a two-character code indicating the param parameter it takes. So the first character X indicates the parameter for match scoring and the second epsilon indicates the parameter for gap penalties. We will see in a second how specific functions look like. But let's check first the, all the possibilities for different parameters. So the match parameters we can set to be X, M, D or C, depending on how we want to provide our match scoring. So if we specify X for match parameters, that means that we want to score identical characters as one, otherwise zero. If we want to use a different scoring system, we can specify parameter M and then we can give our own numbers for match and mismatch. We can also provide these scorings as a dictionary or a callback function which are defined by D and C parameter. Similar for gap penalties. We define X if we don't want to have any penalty for gap. We have parameter S where we give penalty differently whether it's open or extended the gap. We can also give different open and gap penalties to different sequence and we can define that by parameter D. And again, similarly as a match function, we can also create callback functions that will return gap penalties by defining a parameter C. So here we are going to only focus on examples of global alignments. Local alignments can be done similarly by replacing the global keyword in a function call with the local one. First, what we need to do is import the pairwise2 module from BioPython. We do that by calling from bio import pairwise2. And first example we will check is where we don't have any, where we don't give any penalty for a gap and we give a default scoring of 1 for identical characters and 0 for mismatches. So global xx and here global means that we want to do a global alignment and this can be replaced by local if we would like to do a local alignment. First parameter x is for match score and second parameter x is for a gap penalty, meaning that we want to match, we want to score the matching characters as 1 and mismatches as 0 and there are no gap penalties. So we do that by calling pairwise to align global xx on these two sequences, which will give us back all the alignment with optimal scores. 
In this case, we have a couple of global alignments between these two sequences. Let's check only on the first one how this one uh, was scored and how the score is for. So we said that for matching uh, characters, we will give a score of 1 and mismatch means 0 and no gap penalties. Meaning we have one score for one, one matching character here, no penalty for a gap, so we don't uh, reduce anything. Additional score for uh, matching, no, no, penal, no penalty for a gap and another two matches, which give us back four. Now we can move to another example of global MX. So again, the first one, the first parameter is for match scoring and the second parameter is penalty for gaps. Again, X meaning, meaning we don't want to give any penalty for a gap. And remember, M means that we want to define our own scoring system. So we say that for match, for matching characters, we want to give a score of 2, and for mismatching characters, we want to give a score of minus 1. Again, we call pairwise 2 align global mx, which will give us back all the alignments with optimal score. In this case, we have 4 with score of 8. Again, we can check how we uh, got to the score of 8. So remember, we don't give any penalties for gap. So we have one matching, uh, one matching characters, which are uh, which is score of two. The second pair of matching, uh, the second pair of matching uh, character, with, which is additional score of two. The third one, which is then additional score of two, and the fourth one additional score of two, which gave us back eight. Let's define now some penalties. We'll use the default scoring system where matches are scored one and mismatches zero, and we will use our own scoring, our own penalties for introducing gaps. So for opening a gap, we will give minus two penalty and for extended gap, we will give minus one penalty. Again, we call pairwise two align global XS for global alignment. And we get, in this case, we give back, uh, we get back only one optimal global alignment. So again, matching characters score of one, another set of matching characters score of one. We see an opening gap and we give penalty minus two. So we are back to zero. We see an extended gap, we give a penalty of minus one, so we are at score of minus one. And we have a two sets of matching characters, which is additional two. Minus one plus two equals one. That's why we got the score of one. We can also use a scoring matrix for sequence alignment of proteins. In this case, we will load the Blossom 62 matrix, and which will give us back the matching scores for the protein alignment. In this case, we will do a global alignment of two protein sequences using this Blossom62 matching score for proteins. We can do that by defining this uh, D parameter for matching score. So again, DX, so we won't give any penalties for gaps and we will use Blossom metrics for matching scores. So when we call pairwise to align global DX, it will give us back only one uh, optimal global alignment. With, with score of 13. Let's now check the last example where we define the callback functions. In this case, we will use global MC, so matches will score 5 and mismatches will score minus 4. And for gap penalty, we will define this gap function. So in here, the gap function x epsilon. x is a gap position in a sequence and epsilon is a gap length. If the epsilon is zero, meaning if we don't have any gaps, we will return z uh, zero. We won't give any penalty for this. If epsilon equals one, that means that we got uh, there is an open gap, and we will give open gap penalty of minus two. In any other cases, so if the gap is actually extended, we will give back the score of this function here. So in this case, we call pairwise to align global MC on these two sequences. We give the matching scores of five mismatches we score with minus four. And for sequence A and sequence B, B uh, we give this gap function here. And if we call it, we get two alignments of optimal score of 9.30685. This was a brief introduction to pairwise 2 module. If you would like to know more about sequence alignment and pairwise sequence alignment, you can check the chapter 6 of BioPython tutorial to learn more about it. Again, as always, I will link this notebook in the description of this video. 
That was it for day 3 of 12 days of BioPython. Join me tomorrow again for the new video. See you then. Bye bye!